when I was six, uh, one of my father's co-workers gave me a stack of all kinds of papers. And there were squared papers, there was rough oatmeal paper. It was about two and a half feet high. I still have three of those sheets left, but I became very interested in the graph paper. And I remember coloring those in and making all kinds of varied patterns. And then all of a sudden that was too confining. So I began inventing and changing the squares and changing the, the shapes of the graph forms going outside the box. I was 14 when I found these round rocks in little eddy pools in San Diego at the ocean. And I already had collected some rocks, my mother did. And, but this was my own, it was special. And then I found years later that round forms started cropping up in any art form medium that I used. And I even dreamed about rocks, round rocks, a couple of times. So I don't know what they mean, but at least it's one of the earliest symbols of man drawing the circle and in the round then. So that started it. Okay, this is a watermelon husk and in the summertime the small ones are very thin and I get them off and turn them inside out and fortify them a little bit and follow the, de the pattern and design. I'm not attracted to round shapes metaphorically it's strictly visual. Okay. They're pleasing they just delight me. They're fun. They're easy. Um, it's an easy concept, the round. Um, conceptually, they're primitive, and that has a meaning to me. And once your mind gets set on something, then visually you can really pick up on it. So to this day, I look at the ground when I walk and find all kinds of things in parking lots. Run over bottle caps, which are round. And, <laughs> and people give me round things. So. I went to school five years and I was getting a degree in art and then in the middle of my senior year I decided I'd better do something practical so I got teaching credentials and I taught art in public secondary schools. I stamped these in different metals and it reads Art has always been with us. It was 1950, and at the same time, I took a class in making books bona fide books from scratch using the guillotine and the book press and the whole thing. And that also sparked an interest and then years and years and years later I became interested in papers. First it was painting on canvas and then fiber and batik and then paper. So then I began putting sheets of paper together and found different ways of making books. And in that are is calligraphy and whatever. Mm -hmm. 
I love labels and I began soaking labels off of cans and wine bottles and then I began making books out of those and then um, I got a coffee maker that takes a round coffee filter and the first time I made the coffee I took the filter out and washed it and it was absolutely gorgeous. So I began saving those and making books in the round either to be on a table or hang on the wall. With coffee filters the paper is wonderful. It takes calligraphy, it takes the pen, it takes drawing, it takes paint. It'll take anything. And I don't set out to use recycled things. I see something that looks usable and then I make something out of it. This is titled Emiko and it's pretty much recycled. It's on an old drawer and the handle is still visible at the top. And I got three or four oriental dolls at a yard sale and I took them apart. I wanted to use the legs and the hands and the head and so I put her head on an old spindle and put checkerboards on that and put the spindle on a base of a cut down oatmeal box. And the doodads hanging here, the dingle dangles are white clay and paper with all kinds of markings and stamps, rubber stamps on them. And I added the string because everything needed to come together. And her wings are from an 1890 University of California book of orchard pests. And I had the illustrations, which are gorgeous, copied. And the wings are one of those bad moths. And I colored it a little bit and put it on heavier paper to make it look more real. And again, top of her hat is more checkerboard. And I never have an idea of something finished when I start out. It's sort of more or less the materials and maybe the color, maybe an idea or slightly something I want to say. And it just evolves. And I think it was Buddha that mentioned how many thousands and thousands of things hit your mind in one instant and instance and science has found out that that's a pretty he was pretty right on I'm aware of humor and I like to be silly and I make myself laugh no one else might laugh about it but I do and the absurdity of things is, and the contrast of thick, thin, dark light, silly and serious is fun. <laughs>